if I would have met her in 94, I would have blew it because I, I wasn't saved then. Yeah. I met her two weeks after I fell on my knees and gave my life to Christ. Two weeks? Two weeks. After I fell on my knees and gave my life to Christ, <clears throat> I met her again. Or I met her. For yeah, you met her time. for the first time. You were yeah, told about her previously. Right, right. So what caused that moment? What, what caused, caused that moment for you to fall into submission with Christ? Um, you know, you, 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 you find yourself in a cycle, man, that you think you're having fun, but really you're, you're hurting people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And maybe even you're hurting yourself. Yep. You don't really realize it. But um, I, had, I had done an a episode of the Oprah Winfrey show. And situation had went on up there with my ex girlfriend who was act actually there also. <clears throat> and when I got home that night, man, you know, it was just tearing me up, you know. And and I tried to go to <laughs> tried to go to sleep. <laughs> uh, but by three thirty in the morning, man, I June twenty sixth, nineteen ninety six, I'll never would forget it. I mean, God rolled me out that bed, man. I, hey Lord, save me and save me good. I never imagined my public healing would inspire others to heal across the world. I thank you for using him to reach the world with a message of hope in relationships. But your life does not. God, you are my publicist. We laugh. <laughs> we share the unadulterated truth. He said, not only have I not divorced you, I ain't exposed you. Oh. We didn't marry fans, we married forever. And we wanted forever to act like a fan. Reveal her, Jesus. I will not compromise mm -mm. on getting a woman to God. You don't have to. And Father, I declare for his future wifey, thank you for preserving her. This season, I declare miracles and manifestations. See, you're selling scripts. And you're unique. You ain't like nobody else. I, I noticed that right away. You being true to who you are, you're going to attract. Mm. It's a Hebrew word, hayil, and it was translated wealth, and it means people, it means men, it means resources, and it means means. I'm Lateris R. Whitfield, and this is the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, Lateris R. Whitfield. Hey, listen, are you still shacking up with us? If you're still mm -hmm. shacking up with us, come on, hit that subscription button and subscribe. Make sure you turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified about upcoming episodes. Man, season six has been absolutely amazing. If you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, make sure you leave a review, uh, rate it five stars, and make sure you recommend this podcast to all your friends and family. Today's episode is going to be amazing. You know, you meet certain people and you come across them in the most unlikely situations. And then you go, they begin to drop nuggets and gems with you. And you say, you know what? I really need you to be on this podcast. A lot of y'all wonder how I choose my guests, where I choose my guests from a very organic place. But I, I'm always spirit led with who I decide to put on this yellow couch to impart wisdom to me and allow you guys to be blessed by the overflow. So without further ado, welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. My homies, Tim and Cerise Brown. How y'all doing? Good, brother. Good. Good doing to see you. well. Absolutely. Blessed. Man, listen, I am so honored to have y'all on the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Thank you. Thank you so much, <laughs> The Paris. Dear Future Wifey. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that amazing, Tim? Yeah, what's, what, what's wrong? I mean, that's, it's just funny. I mean, you talk about being intentional. That's being intentional. They don't get no intentional in that, no huh? Doubt, no to doubt. sit here and do a whole podcast in order to prep my heart for the woman that God right. has designed right. for me. Amen. Um, and y'all been married how long? 25 years. 25 years. Yes. Has it felt like 25 years, Tim? Uh, no, it really hasn't, man. Really? You know, it really hasn't. You know, I think that um, because of our lifestyle of moving around and playing in the league and, you know, because when you're playing, there's like a different marriage. And yeah. Then when you That's retire, right. it's, a, it's another marriage, you know, and you live in California, you live, you know, up in Oakland and you live in L.A. and now you're living back home in Dallas. So, uh, so I think from that standpoint, it hasn't felt like 25 at all, but uh but that's the idea, right? I yeah. mean, to find yeah. somebody that you're not going, oh, God, another day? <laughs> there you go again. <laughs> you still here? <laughs> you want that. But the interesting thing about it is that mm -hmm. most guys and most marriages aren't able to weather that transition from coming from the league and then now transitioning to a typical normal uh, life. So how mm -hmm. are you guys able to that's transition? True. That's very true. Uh, you know, I, I think... Um, 
you know, we transitioned because we didn't have to change that much. Ooh. You know what I mean? I think the way we lived, you know, while we while I was playing wasn't much different than, you know, besides having to go to practice, you know, and do those things and travel. I do still do a lot of traveling, but the lifestyle really didn't change and who we were as a couple really didn't change, you know. So I think uh, from that standpoint, because, I mean, God blessed me to – to do a lot of incredible things in in the football on the football world, but when I came home, I wasn't like, "Hey, baby, you want to watch this film? <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you what your boy did." You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, man, you ain't gonna believe this. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna believe this one. one. You know what I mean? It wasn't that type. You know, I didn't come home going, you know, "Oh my God, let me," you know, and yeah. and heard the same way. You know what I mean? So I think from that standpoint, you know, when you when you have this life that's like this, yeah. When there's a change, but you're still, still like constant, this. Still constant. You know, you have you have the opportunity to keep going, you know. I agree. So, Cherise, um, yes. I said I would like for y'all to name this episode. And what did you say? If the, I said if this, if y'all's life could have, if y'all life was a movie, what would be the title of it? And what did you say would be the title of this episode? And I said God's Divine Plan. Why you say God's Divine Plan? Ooh. <laughs> Let me start with why I can say it was God's divine yeah. plan. And um, so when I, before I met him, I had read a book called Knighting Shining Armor. Mm. And of course, I had dated in the past. It just wasn't, I knew it wasn't who and what God had for me. So this book basically kind of lined everything up on how you should live your life according to God's plan. Okay. And that is to date him, give him your time. And it's all almost like going under construction with him for about, I think it was like 90 days. That was, that was what it called you to do. And as you're going through construction, he wanted you to list all the things and the qualities that you would want in that person, that knight in shining armor. And so I did. I listed my my 10 things that were there. And it said, when you finish, by the time you finish this book, you would have met your knight in shining armor. Really? Yes. It says that. It says that. It's by P.B. Bunny Wilson. And the crazy, <laughs> crazy thing about that was, you know, when you read stuff like that, yeah. you have faith and you trust God, but you're like, yeah, okay, right. You be like, okay. you know, never thinking along those lines, though. Yeah. Never thinking. I just wanted to go under construction. Um, I wanted <laughs> to date the Lord and I wanted God to get me and prepare me for who he had waiting for me that he was preparing for me. I like that. So that's how I know it was God's divine plan is because there was that 90 days and then they had like a graduation afterwards. And Tim will go into our story of how we met, but Tim was at that graduation with me. He was at the graduation <laughs> doing what? Sitting next to me. You went to the plan too? No, no. I, at the end, I, met, I had at the met very him. end, she, you know, I we met had met. Him, so. And I invited him. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Hold on, y'all gonna back this thing up. So oh, you, you ain't heard, you ain't heard the the best of it yet. But go ahead, and ask your question. Hold on, so okay, so why were you at the graduation? Were y'all dating already? No, no, no. I invited him. No, because I just met her, and she, yeah. it was time for her to go, and she wanted me to come to the to the graduation. <laughs> and at what point did? How long have y'all been knowing each other for you to invite him there? Oh. Not long, maybe like a couple of months. <laughs> Because maybe, I, I was, don't think, what would that have been? That? No. It wasn't even, maybe not even a couple of months because we met in July. And, and that I had, had to go to, to training like, camp. Yeah. So that so, had to be after training camp. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, it had to have been like weeks. Why did you go? Oh, because I knew I was going to marry her. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> because that's <laughs> how I went. Okay. Hold on. You're taking me too fast, Tim. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going to take you back. <laughs> all right. Take so me let back. Let me take you back. Yes. So all this happened in 1996. Okay. In 1994, hear me, mm-hmm. I had a teammate to walk into the locker room and say, I met your wife last night. In 1994, it was towards the end of the season in 1994, he walked into the locker room and said, I met your wife last night. And I was like, <laughs> okay, well, tell me a little bit more. He was like, well, she's fine. He said, like, check. Check. <laughs> <laughs> 
Because if you don't start there, we don't have a plan. The conversation's over. Conversation's over. Uh, what do y'all mean by that? You know, you, if you start with everything else over. first, then no, I know, like, bro. It can't, it can't be I, nice personality. No, 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 no. no, no. It can't it, be she loved the Lord. After that, <laughs> after that, yes, it can be. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but, you know, he went on to tell me, tell me that uh, she was a great cook. That was another check. Obviously, she loved the Lord. Lord, that was a double, triple check. Yeah, and um, and she was very good, you know, uh, around people, which for me was a really big issue because I had been in so many situations where you go into a, 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 a party or whatever with somebody, and they they latch on to you. Yeah, don't you know? Don't where you going? You know what I mean? <laughs> and you know, so so anyway. So you need but, a, you need a woman that can also go and work the room as right, well, absolutely. Yeah. Without yeah. me being there, right? Yeah. But but then I'm like, hold up, bro. If she all that, why you ain't got? <laughs> and he said to me, no, no, she too good for me. <laughs> that's you know? what he said. Yeah, that's what he says. No, she too good for me. And I was like, but Chet, just you know, it was my boy Chester McLaughlin who unfortunately passed that's away uh, yeah. ten years, uh, you know, after we you know, got married or whatever. Um, but I was like, Chet, if Bro, just tell me the real story. Yeah, he was like Tim. I'm telling you the story of Chet. Me, because this would be this was before Christ days, right? I know. Yeah. So it's like, bro, yeah. just tell, tell me, me what, the what, story. Yeah, tell me what what, and, what and, done went down. And we'll be, you know, we'll be cool. I'll meet, you know. And he kept saying, he was just laughing, like Tim. I'm telling you. And I was like, bro, I can't believe you doing it like this. I mean, you and I are boys. We all hung out. We don't did some things together, and you go lie to me, like you know. <laughs> And, bro, that went on for a year and a half. A year and a half? Were you not believing? Yeah, I'm not believing. And, and look. <laughs> and he was dating other people. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, was, okay, let's put that out there. This is, this is before star, Christ days, so it's still on. He a star football player. It's still on. We won't name names, but <laughs> no, he was no, dating no, no, other people. Please, <laughs> please let, let, don't name names. Hold on. So for a lot of people may not watch football. They don't know what, what your career is. I want you to speak on behalf of your husband so they know what we're talking about when we say he played football. Oh, okay. I will yeah. share that part. My husband is Tim Brown, NFL Hall of Famer. And let me back up. Heisman Trophy winner. There it is. NFL Hall of Famer who played with the Oakland Raiders for 16 years. There and, it is. And um, is now uh, retired. <laughs> so he's not on the field anymore. <laughs> he could be. I like but to get one of them checks. Be like, <laughs> nice to get for real. Wait, for real. He retired boy. way too early. <laughs> <laughs> At 39, but I retired too early. Yeah, for real. Body <laughs> so banged it, so up. Let me, right. let me get back into the story. So he never introduced us, right? At his wedding, she comes walking in, right? And I'm sitting with 20 football players, right? So you know what's going on. Oh, yeah, there everybody. she is. That's the one. Oh, I've been with. That's why I'm glad I came this way. That's the one right there. Everybody the one. Oh, yeah, everybody. So I'm not, I'm like, oh, the girl's. Fine, you know, but I'm not playing this game with these brothers, right? So, you know. But, and you still don't know who she is. I have no clue who she is. But all the guys are looking for her. Oh, everybody is like, that's the one, right? <laughs> and uh, so we bump. This is what I tell people. She looks, she had, oh my she had goodness. an eye on me. She oh had my an goodness. eye on me. But Terry, she had an eye on me, bro. <laughs> but she, you know, but she anyway, was, let me finish. Don't, don't say it. Don't say it. Let me let me finish. Let me finish. She had an eye on me, you know, so she bumped into me. And you know, and we were both getting like a cranberry orange juice or something. Oh my god, it's so bar. amazing how a husband has his version and a wife Girl, has her version. Girl, let me tell my story. Let, let me, me tell let him tell his, then I'm gonna come back yeah, and come tell, back and you tell you my story. Let me tell gonna, my story. Tell you. So anyway, you, you know, I asked, I, you know, you know, my story is I turned around and said, Hey, you know, do you, what can I get you to drink? <laughs> You know, because that would be the man manly thing to do. Yeah. That yeah. she's gonna tell you otherwise, oh which it's gonna sound like she was hitting on me. But I'll let her tell that story. So anyway, <laughs> but this is what I happened. Bet. This is what happened. <laughs> Chet had us sitting together at the table. On purpose. On, on yeah. And just so happened by the time I got to the table, the only seat was by her. <laughs> and go figure. And we bro, we just got into a conversation and for me. No one else was in the room. Yeah. You know, after a few minutes of just conversing with her, it was like, this is different. This is different than I've ever experienced before. Yeah. And um, and I remember I had to leave that night because my mom's birthday was the next day and I, I flew home on a red eye or something. And uh, so I was leaving the uh, the reception and I went up to chat 
Now, Chet's six, he was 6'5", 350, right? He's a big boy. And uh, I was like, bro, man, who is this girl Sharice? And literally, Latera, he grabs me, you know, <laughs> boy, that's the girl I've been trying to get you with, daughter. I was like, bro, like look, let, me, let me tell you. And I told him then, I said, bro, if I had met her two months ago, <laughs> this would be a double wedding right now. <laughs> I'm telling you that right now. This would be a double wedding. But anyway, now let me let y'all tell her. Go ahead Please. and tell your Go story. Ahead, tell your story, Please Therese. let me tell my version. How you were hitting on me. Go ahead. <laughs> First off, I was him. I was not hitting on him. Let's just let's just get that stand. Let that be stand correct. Uh, okay. 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 So. Fast forward or let's let's rewind back. Rewind. Let's rewind back before we fast forward. So Chester was a mutual friend of ours. Of course, he was Tim's teammate. Right. I met Chester through my dear friend, Angie Allen. So we all would hang out. I catered um, like I do now, you know, cooking. And sometimes I would cater for events. And Chester would always say, girl, how you learn to cook like this? <laughs> and you this young. And I'm like, hey, you know, when you your grandmama cook, mm-hmm. your mama cook, you know. It's and just, where are you from? I'm from, okay, so I was born in Phoenix, Arizona, but okay. I'm from L.A. Okay. I moved to L.A. when I was like three months old. So my roots family, you know, are both in Phoenix and California, but my 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 whole, you know, yeah. upbringing was in California. So, you know, Chester was like, hey, I want you to cook, you know, for this event, blah, blah, blah. I would cater, and he would always say, such and such want to talk to you. And I was like, I'm I'm really not interested. So I would do my catering, go in another room, wait till they were finished so I could clean up and take everything out. And he's like, why you don't want to date anybody? <laughs> and I was like, it's not that I don't want to date anyone. I said, I'm just not interested in any of your friends at all. <laughs> <laughs> None. So you had no desire to date? No, not an athlete because I had dated someone who was, and that was not good. It was just not, not, not good. The the, the typical. The typical. And I was in corporate America and it was just like, this is, that wasn't my thing. And I had friends who dated athletes and it was just this stereotype that, you know, they went through things. And I was just like, I just don't see my life and I don't (laughs) want to go through those things. And so, you know, not calling anybody out. It yeah. just was, that's not how I want to live. It wasn't your preference. It wasn't my preference. And so Chester, was, Chester would always say that. And I think now when we look back on it, I said, Chester was testing me <laughs> to see was I going to try to get with dude and get with other dude and, you know, or whatever. And, you know, they were all, of course, NFL players. Yeah. And I think at that time, he must have been testing me to go back and let him know, no, I found he, her. He kept updating me. He yeah, did. I saw your girl last night. She looking good. da 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 <laughs> I saw your wife last night, not your girl. I saw your wife last night. Yeah, he just he just felt strongly that that was your wife. I mean, Chester and I had an incredible relationship, you know, because uh, not only were we football players, you know, trying to be church folks, you know, and you know, it's a it's a very difficult thing. Yeah, and you know, at the same time, he was going through trying to get married and, you know, all that. So so we were going through some things during the same time that really got us even closer than just teammates. Uh, so he knew exactly what I was looking for, and he knew that she checked all the boxes for me. And uh, Really? Yeah. So. That's, I always say, man, you got to check the company that you keep. Because yeah. when you have – you know, kingdom brothers alongside of you, they can they can check your blind spots. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. So they're able to say, oh, I seen her. You know what I'm saying? And, of course, we like, that's the first thing a brother going to go, well, if she's so great, why you don't want her? <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> but for right. him to be mature enough to be like, it's not mine. That's, yeah. that's for you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's yeah. that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. So go back to your story. Now, what happened? So... <laughs> now, now let's go to this wedding that we were invited to. So I was invited to the wedding as well. And I went with my girlfriend, that same girlfriend that actually knew Tim as well. And we're at the wedding and we're standing in the line, La Terrace, because the wedding's over. So the reception, we're at the after, you know, how they're starting the pre-reception yeah. thing. So it was outside Hayes Mansion in San Jose, California. See, I know all <laughs> details. All details. She said, I got the details. And there was like an outside little bar. So my girls and I were in line and I turned around because he was by himself. He was by himself. He wasn't with anyone. And I turned around and asked people, him. Yeah. Yeah. I said, hey, would you like for us to order your drink with R? And that's just me being friendly. He says I'm flirting, but okay, I'm gonna give him whatever he wants to call it. Look, and Terrence, I turned around. How many times have said, you been trying to get some? And some girl turned around and said, well, "How many times did that happen? It don't happen. It does not happen. It did. And look, 
the bad part is, Lateris, my girls can back it up. Because they were like, yeah, you turned around and asked him, did he want something to drink? And then I, he said, well, what are you drinking? I said, oh, cranberry, da, da, da. And he was like, oh, I'll have the same. From that, ex- that happened and oh we went our God. separate ways. <laughs> He gets the timeline a little, you know. Well, let me ask you, you this. Know, Let's go a little, little deeper. Up. When you saw him, were you initially attracted to him? No. All I right. wasn't doing it for that reason. I was okay. just really, he was standing Drive there by nice. himself. That was it. So, so I'm, I'm being real. So when y'all had that conversation where he said nobody else was in the room, did you feel the same? So as we're having that conversation, because that's at the reception. Right. Because his timeline is a little different. So he had already <laughs> gone up to Chester and said, who no, is the no, girl? And then he afterwards. got to, how did you end up at that table at that reception then? What do you mean? How did we end up sitting because together? How did we end up sitting together? Because we all had numbers that we set at okay. the table. And how was it just happened to be that you and I ended up at that we, table? We didn't have a seat number, but I think that's sort of the God's divine plan. <laughs> because somebody could have sat there. Now, hey, she didn't tell you about it. In the night, she was she was eating my cake oh when she was sharing my cake with me. Hey, you want to some of this cake? That is not what What? what? Did you not? Girl, you, hey, you wasn't sharing the cake. Y'all wasn't sharing the cake. No, let me tell you what happened. That carrot cake, girl? He asked me. Would I have carrot cake now? I think about that thing. <laughs> Carrot cake ain't gonna never be the same, huh? First off, carrot cake is his favorite cake, <laughs> not mine. And we were sitting there having a great conversation. I will totally, totally give him that. We were having such an awesome conversation. It's rare that you meet someone and you, and you can just connect. That quickly. That's how you know. That's yes. why when I'm telling you the steps of God's divine yes. plan, I already know it because, I mean, just our conversations and what we were speaking about was just right in sync and just understanding. And you got to remember, I'm from, I'm an LA girl. He's a Texas boy. Yeah. So it was, you know, just, and normally that does not <laughs> come together. Why do you say that? You always say normally. Normally it just doesn't. But let me tell you what the connection was. And that was Christ. And that was because he was very, you know, upfront and honest about how he loved the Lord. And I was too. So I think that that was our, our connection yeah. was there. Let me let me tell you something. That I think is um, you know we're we're laughing and joking, but I think the the thing that's really amazing about this story, if I would have met her in '94, I would have blew it because I, I wasn't saved then. Yeah, I met her two weeks after I fell on my knees and gave my life to Christ. Two weeks. Two weeks after I fell on my knees and gave my life to Christ, <clears throat> I met her again. Or I met her. For yeah, the you first met her time. for the first time. You were yeah. told about oh, her previously. Right, right. So, what caused that moment? What, what caused, caused that moment for you to fall into submission with Christ? Um, you know, you 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 find yourself in a cycle, man. That you think you're having fun, but really you're you're hurting people. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And maybe even you're hurting yourself. Yeah. You don't really realize it. But um, I had I had done a, a episode of the Oprah Winfrey show. And situation had went on up there with my ex girlfriend, who was act- actually there also. <clears throat> and when I got home that night, man, you know, it was just tearing me up, you know. And and I tried to go to <laughs> tried to go to sleep. <laughs> uh, but by three thirty in the morning, man, I June twenty sixth, nineteen ninety six, and never forget it. I mean, God rolled me out that bed, man. I, hey, Lord, save me and save me good. You know, June 26, 1996. Never will forget it. Mine was December the 22nd, 1996. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. All right. That's yeah. when I rededicated my life to Christ as an adult, and I was 18 years old. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it was like, I haven't looked back ever since. Yeah. yeah. So, them dates, man, that, that, those oh, yeah. are, I call it your spiritual birthday. No yeah. doubt. Yeah. No I doubt call it my it. rebirth day. Rebirth. No doubt. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I think, you know, that's really the amazing thing about this story when I, when I think about it, because I know what my mindset was. Mm. You know, man. I knew I knew exactly what I was going to be plan, what I would have planned to do because I had done it a hundred times before. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? And the plan works. <laughs> she said, what? I, I tell her, she I said, girl, what? I tell her, I, I tell her all the time, girl, you lucky. You lucky. Because oh. I'd already seen her. You ain't running no plan on me. You ain't running no plan on me. <laughs> you ain't running no said, game he here. Said, I run plays for a living. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and get paid well, and running get paid plays. well. He said, he said, he said. I did tell him that. I was like, "You would not. I would not have and, been." And that's why I would have. I would have blown it. That's yeah. why. I, that's how I would have blown yeah. it. But 
<laughs> look, I mean, so, I mean, to me, I, I think when I look back on that and I realized that, um, you know, man, this could have happened. Yeah. But now, yeah, you know yeah. I mean? so much more. Yeah. It, mm-hmm. um, you know, because I, I was, you know, if I would have saw her then, I would have just saw, wow. Yeah. What I can get, what I can do. To, yeah. You know what I mean? But when I, when I met her and, you know, to continue the story a little bit, you know, she waited, you know, a couple of days to call her brother, you know, playing that game. <laughs> See, you know what I mean? Like, like my breath was taking. I'm going to tell, I'm gonna tell that talk, version too. You know what I <laughs> mean? But finally, when she, when she called me, you know, we talked for like eight, eight hours. You, you were happy when she called, wasn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, by the time you called, <laughs> I mean, I'm saying, but you know, I'm just saying. I'm know? just saying. I just came to the cross. I mean, the guy's still working on my patience. You know? But no, you know, and I mean, every night, man, we were on the phone seven, eight hours. Yeah. You know, and, while you were uh, planning league? This was right before I went to training camp. And then, of course, when I went to training camp, we had to cool out a little bit. But, uh, but yeah, man, it was, we, I brought her to, uh, Oakland for one of my boys' birthday. Uh, well, she was up there and he he was having a birthday party, and this is really when it sealed it sealed it for me, because this was our first outing. Yeah, together. Mm-hmm. That's what you really and, find um, out. Just so happened that day, I, my knee was jacked up. I mean, I was having all kinds of problems. I had a little limp. I had this guy that walked by me, weird cat. If he walked in here right now, you'd be like, Tim, why were you dealing with this cat, right? I mean, he was one of those cats. Older gentleman, you know, older brother. And he walked by me, and then he tapped me on the shoulder. He said, hey, brother. He said, your right knee is bothering you, huh? And I was like, you know, I was like, who are you, bro? You know, what do you know? Because, you know, it wasn't in the injury report or anything. He's like, no, 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 man. He said, you know, this is what I do, whatever. And he said, uh, I just need to pop your knee. And I was like, no, nah, bro, ain't nobody touching my knee, right? And uh, but my knee was hurting so bad, I was like, okay, bro, let's, you know. So I told her, I say, I'm gonna go, you know, I'll be yeah. right back. And I thought it was gonna be two minutes, but it ended up being about 15. And then at the end, I mean, the brother popped my knee, brother. I never had another problem with my knee. So that brother, I I, I hired him, and he was with me until I left Oakland. <laughs> six years, retired. You know, come on to the house. Hey, yes, sir. Yeah. I know he, I know he weird, yeah. but he'd be all right. He'd be all right. Yeah. He'd be all right. He come let with Doc me. in. Let Doc let, in. Let Doc in. But, yeah. um, but I, I started to freak out. I was like, oh, my God. You know, she's been out there 15 minutes by herself, you know. She don't so know I'm, anybody. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm coming out like, oh, my God, where is she? And bro, I saw her like, ha, ah, you know, laugh. <laughs> so I just like stepped back like. And just watched. Oh, my God. You know what I mean? And uh, I was like, man, you know. Uh, what did like, you feel in that moment? You saw her socialize. You saw her feeling a part of this un- in this unfamiliar atmosphere. What did that yeah, say to I, you? It, to me, it just felt like she was a comp- complete enough woman that she didn't need me to to be there by her and just to, you know, okay, you are you okay? Let me uh, let me let me take your hand. Let me walk <laughs> you over here. Let me do this. You know what I mean? And complete enough woman, man. You know what I mean? And you know with. The lifestyle, again, it's not like I do a lot of partying or did a lot of partying or anything of that nature, but we're going to be in situations where there are going to be people around yeah. and I may get pulled away. Yeah. You got to be able to hold your own yeah. because, you know, I can't be there by your side to direct every conversation and <laughs> yeah. do all that for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, that's uh, real. and I never had to have that conversation with her ever. You know, and to me, that was so huge, man. You know, then the, then the sister going to put some food on me, bro. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm almost, I, I had turned 30. I think I had turned yeah. 30. Yeah. And I had never had a girl to cook for me. That's what I was about to ask. Because I, were, you, were you normally, at, um, were you normally pulling women that were more on the surface level? Like, were you, were you dating women that were, because you said you never had a woman cook for you. Mm. Uh, at that time, how old were you? 26 or 20. And you was cooking 20, like that. 26. You were, you, 20, you, you, yeah, yeah, you turned, turned 27. And you were cooking like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so you never had a woman do that for you at that time. Oh, no, I didn't just cook. I made him a candlelight dinner. And he said he had never had okay, anybody look, he flashed back right now. make him a candlelight dinner. I was like, what do you mean? I thought it was like he was joking. I'm like, he's 30 years old and he's never had a woman. He said, no, not a candlelight dinner. I've never had a woman make me dinner. No. And I was I was really Make me some blown cookies away. And some <laughs> brownies or something, but never a piece of chicken. 
Can a brother get a piece of chicken, please? <laughs> it's a macaroni and cheese. Macaroni and cheese. <laughs> hamburger helper. You know, I oh. take it. I'm good. Oh no, you give and, me some. And, and wait, but I didn't do. I did Cornish game hens, wild rice, brisket, new potatoes, yeah, was, green beans. Was, I mean, I like. Awesome. Really? At 26 years old. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Oh yeah. I'm like I'm giving him like I wanted him to taste and enjoy the candlelight dinner with some with some sparkling martinellis. Yeah, you know yeah. What I'm <laughs> no, it was it was it so was. So what did that mean to you then? Um, you know, I, I just again, you know, being a Texas boy, you know, yeah. you like to be able to eat, you know, meat and cornbread, you know what I mean? And <laughs> you know, knowing that she had the ability to do that was, you know, just another box, man. You yeah. just you know, you checking off all the yeah. boxes, you know. And I think from that standpoint, um, you know, Everything that I was feeling was being was 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 being verified because, you know, everything I thought she was, she was proven to be that. So, yeah. at what point did you believe that she was your wife? Well, I, I think I told her uh, the first time we talked about love that I loved her before I even met her because there were things that I wanted in my wife that I loved way before I met her. And it just so happened, I would find this in one girl, that in another girl, this mm-hmm. and maybe that in another girl. Mm-hmm. But she was the only woman that I had met who had everything that I, I wanted. Um, and uh, so I think those qualities, you know, instead of me going, all right, well, she all right. Let me just take this one <laughs> and a half over here. You know, I don't need all four stars. I take a, a star and a half. <laughs> We can make that work. We can make that work you know for a lifetime. You know, right. he's two, two. Oh, she got two stars, man. I know I can make that work. You know, I mean, and you 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 find yourself in those oh, situations, God. and and that was one time when I was twenty five where I was thinking about getting married to some, somebody who I hadn't known that that uh, that long, and you know, and you know, God just revealed, and even before I got saved, you know, it was just like you know how you do things yeah. and you say, and people just. You know, slip up yep. and they they do something or yes. say something, and yep. all of a sudden it's like, aha, that's what I need it right there. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> you know, but no, nah, man, I think that um, you know everything just went literally. If I would have met her two months earlier, uh, I would have tried to marry her before I went to training camp. The only reason why it happened when it did is because. Man, I had a football season. I had to go play football. But tell me, how? why were you so intentional back then? Like, you you over here, I mean, and let's talk about the life because a lot of times, you know, it, it's, it's going to be some NFLers, uh, NFL ball players that's going to watch this and they're going to be like, oh, that's Tim Brown. Oh, let's, let's watch this. So to add insight to stories and, and to be able to speak to those young uh, men that are living that lifestyle but they're not intentional about what love looks like. You know, everybody got their own journey. But when you look at that, what was your life? Because that sounds it sounds crazy to me for you to say, I was going to get married at 25. Why would you be willing to give up your single life that early yeah. and then again at 30. Well, you know, when you grow up church of God in Christ. Okay, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been ingrained it's in you. It's been ingrained <laughs> in you. You know, you have a pastor that say, God, son, I know you can catch a football, but God wants you to catch a soul. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? When you have a pastor, that that's all he, you know, and and you you truly believe and, and I, I know to be a fact now, that, you know, yeah, God blessed me with a lot of talent, but it's like like my pastor would say, he wants you to turn that talent around and bring it back to him and, yeah. and help him yeah. in some way. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it's not that, you know, when I would meet girls, I'd be like, you want to marry me? You know what I mean? Not like I was, I was a creep, you know what I mean? But, but certainly I think, you know, uh, look, <laughs> I'm thinking, because I was going to bring up my high school sweetheart. Oh, gosh. I mean, bro. You gonna marry her, bro? Of course. I had, of course. I had plans that, hey, <laughs> yeah. I, I told people, hey, I'm gonna go get this education from Notre Dame, come back home, be a deacon in the church, and marry my high school sweetheart. That's what I was gonna do. You ain't gonna play professional football. That wasn't no, part no, of. No, I mean, yeah, that okay. was you know, uh, but and uh, wore matching t-shirts and to the match- state fair with oh, their names. To the state fair. <laughs> and he took it she, to Notre Dame she, with you. She, oh, you took it to Notre Dame with you? I took with the, the t shirt with I love I love her name on the You was walking around wearing it on, on campus. Proud. Like, sporting it. Proud. <laughs> Proud. But bro, she she dumped me. She dumped me at the Heisman ceremony. At the Heisman ceremony? 
Well, you know, yeah, because she's that night after I won, <laughs> she, she she basically told me I had to make a choice between her and football. Oh, so oh, that's I mean, deep. Yeah, it was really deep, but I felt bad for her because I knew that she didn't understand what was happening and the emotions of everything that was going on. And, you know, we came back to Dallas and I, we tried to work it out. And but she was really adamant that she wanted no parts of of that lifestyle. And, um, you know. I mean, it, it it worked out. I mean, she she's well. You know, clearly, she's, you got Sharice. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, worked out for me. Say it, that, that Latarius. Yes. It worked out for me. It, it worked out. Wow. But, but anyway, but so uh, and so, she told you to choose between football and her. Yeah, you know. Again, did, did you I, make the choice? Did you actually say I choose football? Or you just didn't answer the well, question. I didn't, not that you know, because yeah. I knew her well enough to knew that, to know that she was a very emotional person. So yeah. I, I wasn't gonna go there, but. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, this all ties into the fact that I probably would have married her. Yeah. I probably yeah. would have because yeah. that was my mindset. That was the goal. And then I can, you know, I don't have to worry about, you know, yeah. mama looking at me, the pastor looking you know at I me. Mean? <laughs> you know, I you know, I didn't have to worry about all that. But um, So after that point, did you just go wild out then? Did you be like, all right, I'm going to embrace this this lifestyle full? For the and, most part. Yeah. For the most part. Yeah. yeah. Go on you and tell that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, go yeah, and tell that. Yeah, you know, I have a son, Taylor, who's 34, you know yeah, what I mean? Just, yeah, you know, I tell people I left Notre Dame with more than a Heisman and a degree. <laughs> I left them knowing that I was going to have a son, you know, coming <laughs> eight months later, too. But um, no, you know, I mean, that's, you know, being in L.A., man, it was just a moment, you know yeah. what I mean? And, you know, I was with Eddie Murphy one time and uh, and uh, he asked me what kind of car I drove. I said, hey, man, I got this 928 S4 Porsche. And he was like, Tim, you keep catching footballs. It don't matter how good you look or not. And you driving that Porsche, you gonna be all right. <laughs> you gonna be all right. <laughs> so, and in a rare moment, he was dead serious. You know, he wasn't joking. He was like, "Don't worry about it. Don't worry. About you just you gonna be all right. <laughs> just keep catching them footballs and driving that Porsche. You gonna be all right." Oh my God. So. And you was wise right. advice from <laughs> the one and only Eddie Murphy. <laughs> but so I'm sure he doesn't remember that. But obviously, I only met him that one time. I was hung out with him that one night. He's but, a, he's, and uh, he was all right though, huh? His, his words came. <laughs> yeah, you know. Look, man. I mean, you know. Um, and, Let me ask you this because this is an important question. I've never asked anybody this. Speaking to our our our, our queens, why do you feel that? These women are drawn. It seems like the most obvious things, of course, are the money. But when you when you when you look at women that are attracted to uh, players based upon their money, mm -mm. you said you said just a car. You just driving a car. They, mm. It has nothing to do with your character. Has mm -hmm. nothing to do with your intentions. Has nothing to do with anything. And they're happy just having whatever piece of mm -hmm. you that you're offering. Uh, what would you say to them? Um. You know, I, I think they, because as a man, you can see that very clearly. Yeah. Who they are. Yeah. And because they pre present themselves that way, you treat them that way. Yep. You know what I mean? It's a situation like, okay, you want, you know, you're going to, you want the car, you want, you want to drive in the car, whatever, whatever. And for that, you're going to do what? All right. <laughs> we'll, we'll, I mean, that's just. Even exchange. How, that's just even change. I mean, yeah. that's, that's just how it was. And there was no. Way you know, I mean, you went to certain events with with that person, yeah, because you couldn't take her to this event nope. because somebody else may have the same deal with her. <laughs> oh goodness, that's true. So that's you have to so you have to be bad. careful about that. But you know the, I mean, you know, so you gotta but be careful about that. You, right. you got to be. You know, hey, I mean, hey. He said somebody else might have the same deal with right. you. Right. <laughs> oh, because you already know there's some stories, right? Oh, uh, yeah, you already yeah. know that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know, but look, man, from, from you know, what is so amazing, man, is that, um, you know, you're going through all that, and I, I never forget, and I'm, I'm turning the corner here, brother. You can take me back wherever you want. But I was about 25 years old, uh, 24, 25, and I'm, I got this nice tri-level condo in Manhattan Beach. You, you know said what I mean? Tri-level. Oh man, I'm, you know, I mean, I'm <laughs> 25. I, I just came back right. from my from my knee injury, man, a couple years, and I'm uh, making a Pro Bowl that year again. I'm back, you know, so I'm back. Yeah. And uh, man, I'm standing in the mirror, brushing my teeth, 
And as clear as day, I hear the Spirit say, Tim Brown, when are you going to do my will? And I'm like, you know, almost like I heard a voice, you know what I mean? I know I'm the only one in the crib. I just left her and let her out the door. So I know she ain't there. Oh, <laughs> Lord. <laughs> And man, that 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 <laughs> moment started my started my fight back to you know fight to get to the point, and, you know, and I didn't want to be like, oh, I'm oh, I, I'm just yeah, you know, I'm, all I'm all cold all turkey, in. you know. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it took me four four and a half years, man, to to really uh, make the the change the way I wanted to, uh, way I needed to, but you know, and. All those things that I had gone through, how God was just taking them out of my life and taking this out of my life and showing me, bro, look, look, Tim. Oh, is the problem that you think this is all you? There it is. Mm. Is that the problem? There it is. It, it, do you there. think you went to a high school in Dallas, Texas that won four games in your three years on varsity? Oh, that was nice. Four twenty-five and one. But you think <laughs> you think that, and you got a scholarship to the University of Notre Dame. God. Let's go even deeper with that. Let's talk. The only reason why Notre Dame uh, 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 saw you is they came to recruit another kid <laughs> from Skyline High School, Dante Jones, who ended up playing middle linebacker for the Chicago Bears for 10 years. And that night, you had four touchdowns, kick return, a punt return, long catch, a long run. You played 27 years of football. The only time you scored four touchdowns in the game is when Notre Dame came to recruit somebody else. <laughs> But you think this is all about you. Teach, King. <laughs> Teach, King. Oh, boy. You think, that, is that the problem? I've been setting you up your whole life <laughs> for me. <laughs> not for, you know, these, you know, what's going on in L.A. That, that, that's not what I was setting you up for. Teach. Right. You know, and Teach. man, you know, it, it takes a very mature Teach. mentality, man, to get there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you're dealing with. Um, a situation where everybody's saying, oh, man, yeah, that's, you're, that's, that's, you're amazing. That's, you're oh, great. That's great. Yeah. You playing great football. You got three, four, five women. You got da 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 this, yeah. man. Oh, man, you you know, I mean, you you get heralded for yeah. that, you know. and uh, But in your mind, especially your spiritual mind, when you understand, man, I'm getting farther and farther away from where I need to right. be. Oh, that's good. The that's fight it. back, bro, is real. That's good. Because, mm -hmm. you know, the temptations don't stop. No. You know? And, and actually get stronger it because gets, the Bible oh, yeah. says you cast out a demon comes seven times stronger. Right. So now right. it comes with a vengeance. And yes. you're like, what in the exactly world am I? exactly what you like. Yeah, yes. exactly. You're like, yeah. oh, wow. Well, right. thank you, Lord. Is it right. Lord? <laughs> Devil, which one? I'm going to give God glory. <laughs> you like, got to be Jesus. <laughs> got to be. <laughs> got to be. <laughs> you got to be a heavenly angel. <laughs> you got to be. No. And it's just a cycle that, that, that keep pulling you in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so your journey, have you always been a Christian? So, yes, very much so. Um, I start, I, I think when I think back on everything, I, when I share my story and kind of tell you a little bit more about me, I heard the Lord speaking to me as a little girl. Um, At what age? I think I was like five. Five. You remember that? I do remember that. And the reason why is because I was going through mm. a very, very hard time in my life where I was being molested by a family member. And um, the one thing I would always do is ask God, why is this happening to me? And, and what did you hear him say? I would hear him say, I'm going to protect you. So at five years old, Hearing him say he'll protect you, but not mm -hmm. feeling protected. How did you reconcile that in your I did mind? I not understand that because I would always ask, why is this happening to me? And I would always say, God, why did you make me so ugly? Why did you make me? Because the one thing you feel like is that you're doing something wrong. Of like, course. This is you. You know, you've made and, and the ugly part of it. And I've come to understand that. It's just because you feel ugly because you think it's an ugly thing and you can't explain it at that age. And my molestation started even younger. I was like th three when things start happening and people like, how do you remember? Yeah, how do you remember three? And, but I just remember being young and I know that I can tell because the, the, the molestation would happen. I don't like to use the word rape, but um, the molestation would happen at my grandmother's house. Well, at my grandmother's house, there's a particular room that I would always be in, and I still see the room to this day. <clears throat> and I was a little girl. I mean, I was a itty-bitty girl. 
I didn't start school until kindergarten until I was four because we were put in school early because we were pretty smart. So it was happening before I started school. That's how I can tell you the age. Because someone asked me that, well, how do you remember? I'm like, I can associate it with what was going on in my life at that time. And I started kindergarten at four years old. Mm. So, and it was before that at my grandmother's house in that particular room when that started happening to me. And it started with like fondling and everything. And then of course it went further. (laughs) For how many years? Oh goodness. It went on for years. My mom actually caught him. I want to say when I was like five, Um, she had gone to take my brother to school and he was in, um, at our apartment and my mom walked in and had me on top of him. And then he threw me. And my mom knew exactly, of course, what was going on. What happened kind of leading, you know, years later was just fondling where if I would be in a room or stay at my grandmother's house, he was one of those creepy people that would come in the middle of the night, like trying to touch you. So I would scream out and then he would run away. You know, it was just like situations like that. And that happened until I was about 12. And then they finally sent him away. Finally. Finally. Finally sent him away. And so when I when I talk about that, I always talk about how I always would hear God and hear that I love you and I'm going to protect you and I and I'm going to I got you. But I did not understand that. But as I got older and I understood the path that God had for me and the reason why and the purpose was for me to be able to share what I share right now to this day, because people will look at me and say they would never know that that was my story in the sense of because I don't, it doesn't, I don't look like what I've been through hmm. and I don't, I don't carry it the way other people have carried it because of God. And I know it's been because of his grace and his, his, his deliverance and his healing yeah. um, is because I'm in his word. Yes. I've been in his word for years. I've prayed for years because I needed him. I, he was the only name that I knew to call out on. Mm. Um, and I learned that at a very, very early age. So salvation came for me, of course, at 18, but rededicated my life again at like 21, you know, just because of things that you go through, same yeah. kind of stuff. You <clears throat> yeah. live your life and think this is the way, you know, you're supposed to be living because this is what the world yeah. what society deems as normal. I had girlfriends saying being, you know, a virgin or whatever, oh, you're 18 and what? You know, yeah. like there was something wrong with that. Yeah. So I'm in my mind, well, gosh, maybe there's something wrong with yeah. that. Yeah. But in, you know, that's just because of just society, just our world and what, you know, people feel like is normal and what is not normal. But God has always said that I was his. Yeah. And, and I and these are things I knew. I, right. I knew this from the very beginning. And as I've grown and as I've shared my testimony of what I did go through, um, I always kind of bring it to my husband um, and bring him in it because if not for his love and his support, even in marriage after you've gone through what you've gone through, you still have those scars. They remain with you. And I want to talk about that because that was one of the reasons why I uh, wanted y'all to be guests on this podcast. First of all, I want to back up to Tim. It's hard for you to hear that, huh? It it is it is because um, you know as black folks, man, we we know better. Yeah, we know you you can't be leaving. Yeah, you know, a older kid who not doing anything with a little girl. Yeah, and, and we just and you know we just overlook it and and then even when they find out, not to really do anything about it. Yeah, and really they didn't. This this same gentleman ended up being killed in a very tragic way. Wow. They were blown to pieces because, you know, they never really got him help. Yeah. Right. And so he's his lifestyle's been out of control. Yeah. And, you know, he ends up, you know, dead or whatever. But uh, but man, look, um, you know, God is God is so purposeful about how he does things. It's, it's really just amazing. And, you know, the one thing that and I'm not trying to make this about me at all, but I I think this this is just so um so rightful for 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 what for what I was trying to accomplish, you know. You have a young lady who looks like this that everybody's thing has to be a certain way, yep. da, 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 whatever, whatever. And when you meet her and get to know her, you understand. Whoa, this is the last thing on this girl's mind, and, and yeah. then, you know what I mean. And but for me to go a little deeper with it, you know. The one thing that you always worry about or you would worry about in normal situations is 
man, my, my, wife, my wife good? Is yep. she good? Is yep. she looking at another brother? What, yep. What's going on? Yeah. You know, I know that that's never going to be her situation. 100%. Be, you know, it ain't going to be because she want to go lay in the bed with something. Yeah. Now, she, you know, it may yeah. be something else. Yeah. But it ain't going to ever be that. Right. And the fact that, you know, you know I, I have boys who look at her up and down and go, well, I, I might as well take a shot. <laughs> You know what I mean? You said you, you got know, boys to try to you know what I mean? Talent? You know, and, and they, you know, I, I said, you know, I, I should said, call I said, them, you know, associates or, you know, you know. So you think Josh, you think shot at you? Oh, oh definitely. You know, but, you know, but. Very well known You, you know, you know, you know, and look, first of all, bro, let, let's, let's go there. Yeah, but, bro. But, you know, so I, I just think, man, that it's just so amazing that, you know, all this sort of wraps up and God knows you hate to know. Uh, I hate the fact that she went through what she did, but it's working out in yeah, our favor right yeah, now. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, yeah. It's all working out in our favor because look, we love each other and we haven't had bad times between us, but we've had bad times. Yeah. Of course. You know what I mean? And during bad times, you know, Hey, you know, you can make a decision to do whatever you want. Yeah. And, but those things don't ever come up. It's never that type of situation in this relationship. And so to me, you know, God never makes a mistake. And I always tell people that at the end of whatever you went through, if you're still there, then that means God wants you to tell that I was, yeah. I, I yeah. encouraged her. I will not, I to Brown, you got to tell, I call her Brown. Brown, you got to tell the story, baby. <laughs> you got, you got to tell your story. How and, long ago did you start uh, encouraging oh, her to tell oh, story? No, no. And, when I, when I first, the, you got to tell the story. Because, you know, I had a story when I was 13 about my dad who, you know, threatened to kill me, this and that, that, you know, it took me a while to tell the story because I didn't want to embarrass my dad. Yeah, yeah. They want to embarrass him. Yeah. But before he passed away, I mean, brother, you know, took off his mask. Hey, uh, I saw you on TV last night telling that story. You need to tell the real story. And I knew exactly what he meant. Like that, I knew exactly what he meant. I what was the real me. story? Well, the real story was, you know, I, I tell uh, people. Turn the microphone. Yeah, hit oh, it up. Yeah, turn it. Perfect. Just like that. I, you know, I, I would tell people I've never had a drink of alcohol in my life, but I would never tell people why I never had a drink of alcohol in my life. And <laughs> Same that would with me. I've never my, drank a day in my yeah, life. Yeah, my, my dad came home intoxicated one night and literally threatened to kill me. You know what I mean? And so I said, as a 13-year-old kid. I'll if, never drink. I'll never. If that what alcohol does to you, I'll never drink. A, I'll never have a drink in my life. You know. So your dad told you tell that story. He told me mm -hmm. tell that story. And he wrote a book. He wrote a book. He has you a know, book. put it in the book. You know. Uh, you know. And so. Went in depth about you know. So. You know, I, I cannot. You know, if I'm gonna tell my, you know, let's tell your story, and and she'll tell you that when she started to tell this story publicly of how all the women who would like pull her coattail. You know, Sharice, thank you. I went through this. Yep. Sharice, yes. I know somebody who went through this. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Yes. And if they can see her standing up here looking like this yeah. and, and going through, my God, you know, I mean, it, it just gives people hope that whatever they went through, yes. that, you know, God was with them and still with them, you know? Definitely. I did an episode a few seasons ago called One in Five about mm -hmm. one in five women have been victims of sexual assault, um, which was an astounding number. Uh, you know, just just knowing that, knowing that as God continues to prepare me for my future wifey, no telling what she comes to the table with. And I have yes. to be sensitive to That's that. Right. That's um, right. And being a man that, you know, men, we're, we're so brainwashed to, you know, sex, 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 That's that right. type stuff. But then for God to discipline me in that area, to cover her in that area, mm -hmm. if in fact that's a part of her trauma and not weaponize that against her, be like, that's oh, right. you ain't, right, oh, right. God, oh, Lord, right. now, yes. now I'm stuck. I'm married to you for the rest of your life. You ain't going to give me none. Right. Instead of cultivating right. that atmosphere in yeah. order for her yes. to, to right. heal that thing. So what she told me, King, what she told me about you is that it was so powerful. I said, I need it them on the podcast so Sharice I want you to talk about that uh mm -hmm. being married with that level of trauma how did when when how did Tim cultivate the atmosphere for you to begin to be to heal from that definitely and and it, when I shared that with you um it's huge to me because you just touched on it I brought into the marriage my scars right. and I brought into the marriage, my insecurities about intimacy. I struggle in that area really, really bad. 
And he never said like what you just said. He never was like, man. I had to deal with this. This You know, I'm married to her. And, you know, he was very patient and very understanding with me. And what do I need to help me get past that? You know, and it was never like worried about he going to go cheat on me because I don't fulfill a certain desire and need that he probably with someone else. It would be completely different. So let me ask you that, Tim. Why? Why? You you, you come from this industry where Mm -hmm. sex is exchanged. You can get sex with before you get a peanut butter and jelly sandwich mm-hmm. but then you go marry a woman who's the direct opposite, opposite. of all that yeah how yeah. in the world did you reframe your mind to be accepting of that um you know first of all we were married you know what i mean and you know i knew about some of this before we got married not probably the whole or the majority of it but i knew some of it enough to know what the situation was and I used to joke with it all the time. I'm like, well, you know, God has punished me for what I did before. <laughs> he didn't say that. He did. I was like, see all that you were doing. <laughs> he, he just punished me. I was like, yes, Lord. Yeah, yeah, hey. Yes, I Lord. You, I Lord. receive I it. You, Lord. I receive it. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, uh, uh, well, this is what I did. All that I did. You know, know I, look, man, I, I, right. I, I, I just believe that. What God has for you is for you. Teach, yeah. King. I, I really, I really, truly Teach. do, man. And you know, um, you know, look. And my pastor says this. He, he's ninety years old now, but you know, hey, the older y'all get, the more y'all ain't gonna be thinking about that anyway. So y'all, <laughs> y'all can keep on. Y'all can make that a big deal if you want. But but the older y'all get, I'm here to tell y'all, y'all ain't gonna be thinking about that that much. So look, man, you know. I mean, it, it's, it's just too many great qualities in this woman for me to even think about letting that be oh, good. be a, a an issue that I, I could even think about allowing to interfere with what we have going, man. So, yeah, uh, that was so helpful. It, but it, that was helpful for me. Yes. I, I mean, it really, really was because I think I even shared with you as, um, yeah, I had my intimacy problems, but even when I went to have my children, um, the damage was done. Yeah. And I went into preterm labor with our first daughter and then um, struggled to get pregnant again. And um, God blessed us to have twins uh, four years later. And even with that, bed rest, you know, mm. um, because um, dilated cervix that will never close, yeah. you know, things like that. So um, even that layer upon layer, the one thing he did touched on and he talked about him getting killed. Let me tell you about this man. So my uncle, who was my molester, was killed, and we buried him. And not only did we bury him, we've raised his daughter in the house with us. Hmm. So, Hmm. you know, that's how you know this is nothing but God and God's plan and God's purpose and how yeah, he's going to break down crying. Y'all finna, y'all finna, <laughs> <laughs> God, and how he's gonna, the level how of forgiveness, you. boy. Yes, and that's yeah. what people would ask me all the time. How? How? I said, God, he forgave. He forgives us every single day. We can repent. <clears throat> we can ask for forgiveness. I don't know if he even in the time he got murdered, the way he got murdered, it was very, very brutal. Um, his daughter was was at uh, with us in our pool swimming. I think we got a phone call and we were told what had happened. And, wow. Um, she was with us, had been with us. Um, and, you know, we flew to Phoenix and took care of it like it was like it was our brother, you know, or. You know, how? Because I know that's what God would want us to do. Tim, how? <clears throat> well, I knew she wanted it done. If she didn't want it done, it probably wouldn't have been. No one in that family could have talked me into doing what yeah. I did. Um, but when she looked at me and say, I need for you to do this, then it was, you know, it was a done Because it's hard for you to even listen to it. So how did you go to that extreme? Yeah, to- it, it was hard for me to be around him when he was alive, for sure. Um, but, um, and certainly in no way were we happy to see him gone, especially in the brutal way that he, he was taken off this earth. Um, but, you know, I think at that particular point, all that is behind you. You know, the man is gone now, and you got a family here, you know, two sisters, two brothers, you know, and they have a really big family, especially in Phoenix, and you you got a, you got a mess. You know, nobody can come up with anything, and, the, 
And, you know, so, um, look, I mean. That's deep. When you think about all that, it's like, that's just, that's just, that's, but again, that's just God's grace. Yeah. No, it is. You know, yeah. it's, it it's, is. that's what happens when it just passes all understanding. It's like, it don't even make sense. It's exactly. like, why did this happen to me? Yeah. But then right. you use me to be the person right. to right. help facilitate right. the, the, what kind of sick joke is this? <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But God says, my grace is sufficient. sufficient. Mm. And, and yes. that's the reason why God has y'all in this blessed place from a heart position, from a yeah. soul position, because y'all are actually operating as the hand and feet of Christ. Mm. And that's the biggest honor that anybody, you know, give me a Heisman all day, but right. at the end of the day to be, to give me a jewel in my crown. That's, 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 that's what I really that's want. That's what it's about. And so that's, that's, ugh, yeah, yeah. That, that blows my mind. And so yeah. when you talk about, uh, when you, when you talk about um, how secure you are with saying he never stepped out on me, why do you feel so secure in that? Oh, I am so secure because the one thing he told me, and we talked about this when we first <laughs> start. I think were we married or even dating? That was before we got married. He said, I would, he said, first off, I would never cheat on you. And it has nothing to do with you, he said, but it has all to do with my relationship with God. There it is. And the conviction that I I, I owe him. There it is. He says, so. I will always, always love God more than I love you. There it is. So that's yeah. why I can say there with it confidence is. Mm -hmm. that I've never had to worry about that. And even with me, he like he says, you, that's that's not even... <laughs> that's all not, that you that's are all, yeah exactly so and we tease each other sometimes because and i you, i didn't say this but the divorce rate and what happens um after nfl is like 86 percent. it might even be higher now um, um we used to host like couples bible study and all these different things um and we've seen our friends and and how they're not married anymore we can count on our hands how many people are still together. Yeah. And it is so important that marriages last, yeah. especially Christian marriages. You know, and and even the 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 rate of that, yeah. <laughs> you know, same. the percentage is just same. as high. Same. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, if we're saying we made a covenant with God, if we made a covenant with the Lord, then how are we leaving out of the covenant and breaking the covenant? Because not only are we breaking the covenant with him or our spouse, we're breaking the covenant that we made with the Lord. Facts. So that's why it's just so important. And I'm grateful that my husband is who he is in Christ that I don't have to ever worry about that. Women who have faced and dealt with uh, sexual trauma, what what do you say, Sharice? How did you work through that with your husband? Really, the transparency, number one. You know, you have to communicate and share. Yeah. As much as I don't like talking about it, and I'm, I can tell that I'm growing because I didn't have tears come out of my <laughs> eyes when yeah. I was sharing that you yeah. know, with you guys today. Um, it, it, I, I know it's nothing but, but God and his grace and his, and his goodness and his mercy. Um, but the strength that he's given me and the peace that he's given me over time to be able to share and express, but with him, I had to tell him what happened. I couldn't bring him into a relationship with me, not knowing yeah. what I had been through. What, what was that? easy for you to do because you, you did that before y'all got married I right did do that before we got married i, mm -hmm. I told him uh, you know i kind of touched on it but the you just he, kept spoon he didn't know the other she part didn't. because you know the intimacy part didn't happen until yeah you know we were married and you know then she 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 had a difficult time because he was still alive oh yeah yeah very much so, so she had a difficult time yeah. telling me the whole story yeah then i you had know. to say who yeah, it was. And then yeah. you got to wonder if he ain't going to act the fool and go right. get him. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I know he had to be yeah. looking at him like sideways. His mom, was thinking, his mom was like, you know what? Yeah. I think God uh, well, you know me. what? what <laughs> yeah. Can I what, lay hands? Yeah. yeah. What, what, what was really amazing to me was how he would be around and like what? Yeah. Like what, what, what are y'all talking about? You know what I mean? Like what happened? You know what I mean? Like nothing ever happened, you know? That's and crazy. And most, I, I, I but just, most are like that. I, yeah, I, I, I heard. Just, I just thought that he should be whatever you need. Yeah, you know, and not yeah. not not saying what what he did, but still but be just more. be very apologetic about you know what can I do for you? What can I you know? Yeah, I, I really never felt that felt that spirit for him. So it, it was tough. It was tough. Now I'm I'm an easygoing guy, you know, and I'm not gonna. I mean, it takes a lot to get me going. 
But I knew that wasn't a situation for me to really jump into because uh, the family hadn't done anything. So yeah. what, what, what I'm gonna do? You know what I mean? <laughs> but um, but yeah, it was uh, it, it was tough, man. It was really tough, and um, you know I felt bad by her for her because I know she was uncomfortable. You know what I mean? And um, so you know I think from that standpoint, you know it. it, it the way it worked out was not the way anybody planned it. Yeah, yeah. definitely but not. At, at the same time, you know, it it is what it is. So. What would you say yeah. to men that are, especially with the the statistics, men one in five? What do you say to men when dealing with a woman that they love that uh, opens up and shares that they've dealt with uh, sexual trauma in the past? How? What kind of space? How? What? What are some tools that you should uh, that you could give men in order to navigate that space? Well, you know, first of all, you know she's unusual because a lot of women go the other way. Yeah. They go yeah. to promiscuity yep. you know, because of, because of this. Yeah. And, and that's obviously a much bigger issue to deal with because, yeah. you know, now you don't know what's going on. Yeah. But look, I mean, when it's like I said a minute ago, you know, when you look at everything that's going on and all the traits and, you know, all the, you know, everything that she has happening, what that, that has nothing she didn't do that to herself. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. That was something that was brought upon her. Yeah, and she's handling it in the best way that she possibly can. And if you love her, you know, again, it ain't like you're gonna be in the bedroom all day every day. Yeah, you know what I mean. But you know, you deal with what you have to deal with. But at the same time, man, I mean, we 25 years. You know, yeah, let's yeah. go. Yeah, you know, let's yeah. let's make this thing into you know, let's have a real life. And, you know, those issues may come up a couple of times a year at this point, but, you know, it's not that big of a deal. You know, if you love a woman, love that woman. If you love a woman, love that woman. I mean, and what that means is basically you're in it for the long haul. And right. why I'm going to get all upset about a, a, a moment when we have Something a lifetime. She didn't have anything to do with yeah. And I'm going to hold her responsible for it. <laughs> and tell her, just get over it. You should just, be over it by get, now. <laughs> How but, long you do, you but you do have people who feel that way. 100%. Yeah. Because, yeah. because no one understands the the shelf life of the of the... The the trauma you mm-hmm. feel like if it happened when you were five all the way up to twelve and now you're mm-hmm. fifty some it's like okay now right. why right. you should use that over. excuse right. you should right. be over this by now but, 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 but you're not but but you know what is what is so amazing is that I can remember a man being young and saying you know man when I'm fifty years old I'm not gonna remember that <laughs> you know what I mean I'm not gonna remember that. I'm not going to remember that yeah. whooping daddy put on me. I'm not going to remember yeah. falling down, almost breaking my leg. I ain't yeah. going to remember that. You know, and really believe in that. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And now I am sitting here at 56, and I, I recall all that stuff like it was yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But if we can recall that, think, think about, about what, that. Yeah. what she's recalling. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, so these thoughts run through my head, and, you know, some of you try to shake out, and some of you go, okay, what 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 happens here? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's, that's if you look at it in, in that manner, that, yeah, I mean, when you're young, you think, oh, well, I just won't remember it, so, you know, because you, you don't know better, you know? <laughs> but, you know, to be where I am now as far as my age, and think about the things that I can remember going back to, I was four or five with happy days, some bad days or whatever, they don't come close to what she was going yeah, through. You know what yeah. I mean? And she's having to deal with this on a regular basis. You know, so we talked about why he married you. Why'd you why'd you say why'd you accept his proposal? <laughs> well, I think I kind of touched on that too, is just even when I met him, to be able to converse with someone on that level and then have an understanding of who you are and accept you as who you are. Because you have a lot of people that'll meet you and think the first thing they want to do, and it's about intimacy, right? you know, and that's their goal, Yep. you know, but with him and our conversations were about just everything, life yeah. and and, you know, what we wanted in life and, you know, even past, past things that had happened in life. But I saw in him, he was everything that I had told you that was on that list. Everything. He checked off every single thing that I wrote in that book. What were some things that was on your list? Uh, God-fearing, love his mother, um, you know, dedicate, went to church. Don't just... 
Don't just give me a church name. <laughs> but <laughs> the church of God in Christ church. church that's different church. That's a whole different level. No. That's all day Sunday. <laughs> Wednesday and, and Friday. Night. And Friday. <laughs> so <laughs> those were some of the things. He was hitting all of those things. You know, financial, financially stable. You'll have some people that, you know, yeah, you look at some people and they think athlete gold digger. Yeah. You know, oh, you're in it for that. No, I was doing pretty well on my own and could have continued doing very well. Right. Of course, maybe not on the level of what he was, but I was, you know, very successful. So it wasn't that. You want to find someone that you can be best friends with. You want to find someone that can be your partner, your life partner. So with him, that's what I saw in him. And I loved how I think any man who loves and shows love to his mother mm. and the way he loves his sisters I know he's going to always love me and love me like that. Facts. You know, it, it is just true. If you have somebody that's cussing their mama out, <laughs> run. Run. <laughs> run. Run. <clears throat> just run. <laughs> because if he doesn't respect his mother oh, on that goodness. level. I tell people all the time. I'd be like, I was talking to this girl one time and she'd be cussing in front of her mom and cuss. I was like, what? It just shocked right. me. I said, yeah. you, you be cussing in front of your mom? Yeah. like, yeah, I cuss in front of my dad. I was like, they don't say nothing to you. Yeah. They're right. like, well, that's, just, that's just what we do. And I was like, no. I don't think I would want you to raise my kids. Like, I wouldn't want you cussing at my kids. Exactly. Like, what is, right, right, that just right. throws me, that my brain just yes. malfunction with that idea. Yes. I'd be like, that, you don't think to not? Right, no. right. You right. respect your boss at your job. Exactly. You won't even cuss in front of your boss. So why would you curse in front of your, your, your mom? Your mom. Yeah, right, like, right. yeah. They'd be like, I've always done that. I was like, you need yeah. to change that. No. That's, that's not, that's that's not, not sexy. Good. And no. that's, that's what I'm saying. It's not sexy it's at, not all. Sexy at <laughs> all. But that's what I was saying, even in regards to Tim. I mean, he showed me very from the very beginning. Like my grandmother, we got married in 97. And I have to tell you a little joke about us getting married. So we were engaged within six months of knowing each other Good. and married within less than a year, even Good. though our children think it's creepy. Yeah, they man. they have this thing. They're like, ew. I'm like, what do you mean, ew? You know, what does that mean? Yeah, what is that? It says too fast? It's too fast. Too fast. Yeah. Too fast. Well, you got to think about, he was 30. I just, what, turned 27 or whatever. So we knew, and, and we had already prayed. We, we, we had we already, only seen each other yeah. three or four times yeah. in six months. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. So remember, there was no FaceTime was and there none was of none of that, God's right? Divide plan. right? It was divine plan. We, we talked. Maybe four for times. I, th I think she came up to a game or two. Yeah. And, and yeah, I went down to her. My job's party. Uh, your job, her job's mm -hmm. party for Christmas. And, uh, and I think the next week when she came up was like the last week of the season or something. And that's when I asked her to marry me. How you know? asked her to marry you? Oh, it wasn't, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. It, wasn't it, was, good. it was whack. It was whack. That. You know, I. Mm. I'm sorry. I don't want yeah, I, I, uh, I, owe, I owe one. Hey, Ooh. but bro, really? Do I really owe one? <laughs> Do, you really owe Do I really owe one? No, Come on, man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's not made the ass right, but I showed up right. <laughs> uh, it's funny because our, our nephew just recently got married, and he did this amazing, oh amazing proposal. Yeah. proposal with and the he boat ride. He over there still holding his head down. Yeah. Like, and, oh the, and, and the whole family was there to be, you know see it. I just got like a um, <laughs> so I'm came so, in the so, room. So, so, so we yeah. get married or not? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Well, we gonna do this thing or what? We what we gonna do? You know. <laughs> Like, and then when you hear about other uh, people's proposals, uh, you're like, you got, I got uh, shipped. You got, got cheated. Uh, Tim, what'd you do? What'd you do, Tim? Did you just say you oh, I just like got Pull on the knee. Well, hey, will you marry me? I mean, that's no all dinner. I got. That's, all that's all I got. <laughs> That's all I got. With no, with yeah. no I, didn't, I, didn't, I obviously didn't no. talk to to any of my sisters about that. I, he could have no. some football he, he, he he some, at the end of the game. Yeah, <laughs> one of one of one of um his teammates, oh Chester, our good friend Chester, yeah. that passed away. Um, that we met at his wedding. His mom kept saying something to me like, "Oh, you about to get a surprise?" So she must have knew that he was going <laughs> to ask. So I thought it was going to happen. Why people be ruining people's surprises? I know, right? <laughs> I thought it was going to happen at the game. Yeah, because she kept saying, "Oh, something's going to happen at the game," and I thought, "Is he going to do it during halftime or something?" Oh God! Or after the Would game? Would you have thought about that at all? No, Why no. Not? Why of not? course not. It no, was no, all no. about I, football. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I freak out now when I see these guys with their girlfriends on the sideline yeah, before game. I'm like, oh my God, how do you do we that? We never did that. Why are you saying, Tim, why are you saying how you do that? Oh, what? it's like, well, what, how, how, can you, how can you hug your wife and go play a football game? I, I, those things just, 
I don't know. I'm too oh, old school, bro. Old school. I'm too old, old school, school, bro. Old you don't know school. how to do it. You don't know how to oh, transition. Oh no. Old school. No. I don't have the kids like no. he would. You know. You <laughs> know they no. would stay at the hotel the night before a game, right? <laughs> yeah. So he would get his his meal. He always had his meal: greens, yeah. cornbread, chicken. You know, his uh-huh. fried chicken, whatever. He'd go to, and we wouldn't. That was it. There was no more communication until yeah. I saw him you after the game on Sunday. Hotel. Hey. Yes. If you call me. That means the ambulance on the way. Yes. That means. That, I'm telling you. That's the only reason why you calling me after no 9 o'clock. No communication until after the game on Sunday. Don't. Was that hard for you? Well, no, it wasn't. no not it at wasn't. all. Not at it all. Wasn't. No, it wasn't. I so you've been locked in like that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Why? Tell me why. Well, I, I, I was playing a very dangerous game. Yeah. And uh, I felt like I had to be 100% locked in on what I had to do. And I, I couldn't have an excuse. Yeah. You know, when things went wrong, yeah. you know what I mean? I had to be able to put all this on me. And and now I was dating a young lady before her, before her who was a, a singer. And she sung the national anthem at one of our games. And I felt like I didn't have a choice but to go out and, you know, hug her or whatever. Yeah. And, and I had the worst game of my life. <laughs> and, and, of course, it was her fault. It wasn't my fault. It was her fault. But See, so, blame her. <laughs> But uh, I shouldn't have hugged you. I, you know, my you mind, I just, you know, I relax. <laughs> I relax too much. But, nah, I, you know, I mean, you know, when you're old school, man, I mean, you know, my coaches say all the time, Archell, you know, hey, hey, if your family's all right, you don't need to be thinking about it. Don't be, you know. And that sort of gets ingrained in you after a while, bro. You know what I mean? And Which makes um, sense. You hit the nail on the head when you said I'm playing a very dangerous game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if your mind is just out of it for this, this can be a career ending injury. And it's like, but at first I was like, gosh, that's kind of harsh. And then when you said that, I was like, oh, that makes sense. (laughs) (laughs) Feel like a car crash every time you you, like. like, I I was good on Sundays. I got up and went to church on Sunday, so (laughs) I could pray over him. Yeah, make sure that God covered him. And that was it, you know. And then get ready, come back home, get the kids ready, and we go to the game. Um, and then, and you know what? And he was always like this after the mm. game, you know, you know, in one piece, no injuries and everything else. So I knew that, you know, we were doing it. So right the worst thing. that ever happened to you is your knee? So I tore my knee up in my second year in the league. So I missed uh, 15 games that year. Doctor told me, man, you may have three, four years, you know, because of what they had to do surgery wise. But man, I, I practiced every day, 15 years straight. Every day. I missed the game day. because they held me out because I had a little sore hamstring. Even though I practiced all week, they, they kept me out of the game. But uh, but 15 years, man, I didn't miss a practice, you know, so. Um, and the doctor gave you three. Gave me three. <laughs> gave me three. But yeah. that's, that's God's divine plan. Me. What's that? God's divine plan again. Yes. God's divine plan, man. You that's know, it. I mean, what, the, what man says. It's just that what man says, but God is always going to have the final answer. I'm trying to tell you. Uh, final say so, man. And, you know, I think for me, um, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> towards the end of my career, or I'm 32, 33, people are starting to say that, um, you know, hey, you may have a chance at the Hall of Fame, you know, <clears throat> you know, <I'm clears throat> you know, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. Let me clear my throat for this. Yes. Yeah. You know, and um and God just reminded me, man, bro, this is ain't about you. This ain't ain't this ain't about you. This, this is this is my plan. This is what I'm trying to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So um and look for for an athlete, man, it's very difficult to get there. <laughs> it's very difficult to get to that mindset because Man, I'm the one who's getting up every every morning going yep. to work out. I'm the one watching what I eat. I'm the one, you know, making these guys miss. You know, I'm the one. I'm yeah. the one. I, 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 I. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, you know, people, you know, you know, even the guys who, hey, I want to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yeah, they just throw it out. They just look. throw it out there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, But to be able to live this thing, man, in that environment was so real because, you know, I had guys by the time I'm 34, 35, literally could have been my kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, they're coming to the league and it's like, Mr. Brown, <laughs> calling me Mr. Brown or Grandpa or whatever. And he said, Grandpa. You know, Grandpa. and they, they, you know, I'm, I've never heard you curse before. Well, that's because I asked God to take that out of my, out of my life. You know, well, what, what do you mean? I was like, bro, I used to curse out everybody <laughs> coaches, teammates, the referee showing up got it. 
And they were like, you, you're lying. I said, no, bro, really. Head coaches, position coaches, quarterbacks. He's a condition coach. I mean, you know, you you that was just what you, you know, but I realized I couldn't I could serve God and, and have that. And be cussing out people. Right. Cussing out people, you know. And uh, I met him after. You met him yeah. after? Yeah. But, you know. Was that it, something important to you, a man that didn't curse? Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I grew and, you up know, with you, that. And I had yeah. that locker room cursing out. Yeah. Which is a little different than regular cursing. Is it more vulgar? Oh, absolutely. Oh. Oh. Yeah, absolutely it is. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, and, you know, that that's one of those things, man, that, you know, um, my son was in church with me today. Taylor came to oh, church, he did? Okay. and um, the the preacher was saying something about you know, you know, cursing. And Taylor was like, "Dad, you got to curse somebody out every once in a while." You got to. <laughs> He's horrible. He's so bad. He changed to be a bad influence. <laughs> he, <did. laughs> he was like, yeah. "Well, I just got to curse somebody out every once in a while." Dad. <laughs> no, he does. <laughs> Our daughter told him that he last once night. In a while. He did something on Twitter, and she was like, "Dad, you're just too squeaky clean." She wanted to be on that show. Uh, what is it called? Oh, it's a oh, show where they have the, the celebrity. Fame. Claim, claim the fame. Oh, okay. The celebrity and the kids, yeah. Yeah. the kids, yeah. and you have to guess who their parent is, and she's sending her information, and they, she, he was like, oh, yeah, you would be so great. No one would ever guess you. <laughs> and she didn't get, they they already picked the people for the uh, upcoming yeah. season. And she was like, you're just too squeaky clean, Dad. <laughs> it's like, dang. <laughs> You yes. gotta, you gotta be a little controversial every once in a while. You need a scandal too. You need a scandal. His agent used to say that you need to just histories one time. I, I just, promise I just you. Put you did push anyway. it down the flight of stairs. Push it down the flight of stairs. Just go off on her in the elevator one no, time. Then get in front of the camera. Well, well, you know what happened no. was. What I was happened? like. Uh, you know, you you would get all kind of endorsements. Why is that? Isn't that crazy though? It really is. Because it there's some truth to it. It's like who it my, is, but my it's agent, sad. It's sad. My agent back in the day would get um, letters, and he would show them to me from companies, maybe big companies, who would say that <laughs> there's no way Tim Brown can be as clean cut as he <laughs> appears to be, and we know as soon as we sign him, you know, them skeletons coming out the closet. We know. <laughs> And it was really amazing, man, that people really thought that, um, you know, what they saw wasn't wasn't real. <laughs> or it's not real, you know, because. Uh, did a lot of endorsements. Did you miss a lot of endorsements oh, because of that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because they assumed that yeah. it's too good to be true. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That is crazy. Yep. I mean, I, I had I had one. I'm not going to, you know, say names here, but I had started a shoe company. I had my own shoe, right? We were selling shoes in Foot Locker and, you know, J.C. Penney's and places like Athletic Express. And I had a big company, big, big company, to uh, fly me and my brother and I think my agent up to uh, up to the office, right? And uh, we're sitting there having a good time. They got their PR people. They got their marketing people. They have, and the president of the company is sitting right by me. I'm sitting here. He's sitting at the head of the table. He hasn't said a word the whole time. And we're going going around, da 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 this and that. Oh. And they were like, oh, my God, this is going to be great. Not only can we do commercials with you, but we can, you know, uh, have you in a corporate office where you can, you know, do something, da-da-da. And, oh, God, this is going to be great. And <laughs> <laughs> the guy turned, and I don't remember their name, but I remember his name was Jim. And they was like, hey, Jim, you haven't said anything. And this cat looked at me and go, uh, yeah, I want to know who you are. And at that time, I think I'd been in the league four or five years. I was like, hey, I'm. Uh, I made three or four Pro Bowls. And I was like, I'm four-time Pro Bowler Tim Brown. You know, Heisman Trophy winner. That's who I am. And, like, ah, ah, ah. and he was like, no, no, I'm, I'm dead serious. I want to know who you are. You couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't possibly be the, poor, the person that you're purporting yourself to be. I didn't know what purport was at that time, but I, I learned what it was after that. You know, I was like, and then I got indignant. You know, I got a little South Dallas in me. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? there it is. Yeah. And I, I stood up. And I say, Jim, if you want to have people following me, you know, to prove that I'm 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 not who I do you do that, but you're gonna be wasting your money, I tell you that. <laughs> and all this market people are like, oh, it's like, hey, if I sell that, you know. And man, you know, I missed out on a five year, fifteen million dollar contract. Oh god. Back in ninety three. <laughs> You know, Over nonsense. Because, because they assumed that because, you wasn't who you said you was. Because this cat, you know what he said? What that was really offensive? He said, You could I could put you in, in the boardroom right now. You could run my company. And I was like, what's wrong with that? 
<laughs> Why is that a bad thing? <laughs> Don't you, know, you want somebody but he educated? Wanted me, he wanted me to be in a box, bro. He wanted me to be in an athlete's box. Yeah. I don't need you trying to be a, you know, a, is a it, smart but, is it, but isn't that sad? That's the craziest thing. Is that, is that, isn't that sad? He said he, said he don't like that. He didn't like yeah. that. I was like, that. no, I ain't, I ain't trying to, you know, you, you, you going to take over this company if I let you. <laughs> And, you know, and probably at that time, I would have been making more money than him almost. You know what I mean? Exactly. So he was like, no. He said, no, I don't like this idea. No, this, 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 this ain't the way I planned this out. Cool. And next year, man, they went and got a cat, man, that was, you know, had, yeah. had the, all the, the yeah. chains and all, hanging his sagging pants and all that. I was like, yeah. wow. Didn't want the really, Notre Dame graduate. No, isn't really, that crazy? Really, really he did busy. say Notre Dame, boy. Well, salute to you, King. <laughs> Listen, man, one thing that I admire is just uh, I love getting reference of a healthy God-ordained relationship. Um, I bring people on my podcast that speak into me first. And then, as I say, allow other people to be blessed by the overflow. And so I'm always uh, choosing people that I glean insight from, wisdom from, um, building up this this village of, of people that I can just say, oh yeah, I remember when I had them on uh, the Browns. They talked about this and and they were married. Like I guarantee you that am, is it safe to say that y'all never ever threw around the divorce word? Oh no, see, yeah. I, I I can I can sense that by just the way how intentional y'all are and how patient y'all are with each other. And so that's what's so beautiful about it. Um, thank y'all so much for pouring into me first. And a lot of people are going to be blessed by your testimony. Um, you have a major project coming up this weekend. What is that mm. project? Yeah. So uh, when I was getting ready to go into the Hall of Fame at 15, I had a buddy to come up to me and tell me that I was only the ninth, ninth the Heisman winner to win the, to to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. And I I thought it was 30, 40 guys. I was like, no, yeah, no. that's what I you was assuming. But um, come to find out that that was the case, we added Charles Woodson when he went in a couple of years ago. So there's there's only 10 guys now. And um, so we. So it's we, 10 guys that have been a Heisman, Heisman and winner, Hall of Fame. And Hall of Fame, yeah. So we got together. I mean, three of the guys, two of the guys have passed away. One of the guys is OJ. So he's sort of like, you know, yeah. not a part. But um, the other seven of us got together and said, look, I mean, we left an incredible legacy on the field. Let's see what we can do off the field. Good. And um, so we were partnering with some companies. Um, we shot a documentary back in October of 21 that uh, is going to air on Fox Saturday night before uh, yeah, before the Super Bowl. So uh, it should be um, it should be an inspirational deal. I mean, I think, you know, guys get to tell their stories. We've never been in a room before. The seven of us have never been in a room before. Y'all shot the so. documentary independent of each other. Well, no, no. I'm saying we that was the first time. For oh, the, the first time with the documentary. We, yeah. So our, our little tagline is more men have walked on the moon that have accomplished the the feat of winning the Heisman and being in the Hall of Fame. So that's crazy um, when you think of it. Yeah, <laughs> that's really that's really absolutely is. crazy. <laughs> that don't I would have never you wouldn't known think that, that there were so many. Yeah. yeah. But um, so, yeah, we want to, you know, again, we, we're doing a deal with Red Cross um, this beautiful. week at the Super Bowl and, you know, trying to give back, man, and uh, hope to be able to partner with some other companies going forward to be able to do some great things. So I love it. I love it. So y'all shot that documentary in 2021 and it's been released this year. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, that's been by design uh, right before the Super Bowl. Like, sure. That's the sure. most brilliant marketing. <laughs> Very much so. The best release date <laughs> ever. ever. Like, right, right. Wow. <laughs> so that's that's absolutely amazing. How did it feel to do a documentary? It was, it was really good, man. I, mean, I sort of got, because I was the one that, Brought everything to light. Good. So they sort of put me in the executive. In the head. Yeah. So yeah. I'm an executive producer. And, yeah. Uh, I'm asking most of the questions to the guys and stuff. Are you over so, interviewing them? Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. Right, so I'm the, one, I'm the one like trying yeah. to, you know, get the conversation started, man. But uh, it, it was great, man. And I have like a personal relationship with all those yeah. guys. Yeah. So it's like mean? talking because, to friends. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, I grew up watching Mar uh, uh, Roger and Tony Dorsett, Roger Starbuck and Tony Dorsett, played with Marcus and and uh, Charles Woodson. Mm -hmm. uh, Barry and I have been competing against each other since 80, <laughs> 85, 86. Yeah. And of course, uh, Earl Campbell, he's a Tyler Rose, man. They're everybody, Tyler. you know, yeah. everybody loves him. But yeah. um, so that was oh, that's really a special moment. Oh, that's going to be nice. Yeah, it, yeah. It, should, it should be. I, I've, I know a couple of people who have watched it already and they are just, they're blown away by it. But I'm choosing to watch it with the family. 
uh, live in uh, in in uh, Phoenix. We got a premiere in Phoenix uh, that Fox is doing also. So it should be should be going good. back to your hometown. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, he does his thing, and then I have my thing. Oh, that's so, right. You know, I do yeah. a charity Super Bowl fashion show with yeah. the wives and the husbands, and but my daughters Phoenix are walking year. in how, the show. How, that's another yeah. God's divine plan, huh? Uh, always just works. It, it just works out. <laughs> it's just <laughs> his plan, and we're going to be there to, of course, support him. He comes and walks in my fashion show. He'll walk oh, me down. Be dope. So <laughs> it's it's always good. And you know what? It's always great because we're, you know, we're raising money for charity and we're giving back in Super Bowl, you know, host communities. How so. can people be connected? What's the website for that? For off the field NFL players' wives, you will, hey, it, it, it when I tell you, you gotta tap in. We gotta start doing some live stuff so people yeah. can see this. Yeah, you got yes, to. I mean, yes. yeah, you gotta I mean Yeah. Y'all holler at me. I can, I can get y'all in the game board. for just yes. doing <laughs> live events, getting cameras, yes. following y'all and all that stuff, because oh that's very necessary. Because yeah. y'all, yeah. y'all out here making noise, but from a social media standpoint, y'all yeah, y'all be like, I don't really do all that. And that's, we don't, and I, you, but, yeah. the, but the thing about it, Latarius, I tell Tim, and we have cameras set up in his, um, in his office, we're supposed to mm -hmm. do this like every day, and he's supposed to do something, <laughs> and I'm like, babe, you know we should be, and he's like, I know, I'm going to do one. I was like, no, go ahead and go ahead. And he's like, "What about you?" <laughs> what? Going back for what about you? Nobody does nothing. And then, and then nothing. our kids, and then our kids are like, "What is wrong with you guys?" <laughs> I tell Tim, Tim will go and do events here, and he'll say, "Oh yeah, I'm going to go do X, Y, and Z." And da, da, da. I said, "Well, why didn't you put it out there so yeah. people know?" Oh, I think my agent and them they posted something. Yeah, we're like, expecting them to do it. All. You can't. No one knows what you're doing unless you do it. And I and I, I'm the same way. I I'm guilty. We are just yeah. so guilty. We're going to get you to fix that. We just oh, he said y'all yeah. just oh y'all don't get it, and, and, and y'all don't see you see the value in it, but you just don't. It's just not a part of your wheelhouse. Yes. Like yes. it's just yes. because as much of uh, production I'm into. I don't vlog a lot, and I'd be like, "I'm a, this year, I'm a vlog when yes. I travel. I'm gonna do yes. this, and I have a camera." I'd be like, "I don't feel like doing this." I'd be like, "I'm like, i taking this camera." One time, I went on this this, this trip. I had cameras everywhere. I had a GoPro. I had wow. other cameras. I had wow. gimbals and you stuff. I said. I don't feel like doing all that. That's too much work. Wait, <laughs> the funny thing about Tim is that he takes pictures and has been taking pictures. You already know yeah. all the time. Every time I say, "Babe, let's take a picture." Man, okay, let me take this picture. You know, it's like it's a chore. It's like a chore, <laughs> and I'm like, babe, but you have to. We have to have these are memories. Or, yeah, you know, then we can, and I'll post it on social media, and I'll say, or he'll send it to his people to post for him, or whatever. And he's like, send me that. I'll send it and let them post it. I'm like. Dude, you could post several times a day all the stuff that you do and that it's you're involved crazy. with. It'd be and ridiculous. they want you to. But and they like, want you to. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. I'm and sorry. then the kids are on a dad. You know, sorry. you should already have such you do, you gotta get what I forgot to, to do take it. a picture while I was receiving the Heisman Trophy. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. How did you forget to take a picture? What are you doing? I made mean, I mean, a big event, man. Like, oh, yeah, I probably should have taken a picture of that. Yeah, that would have been nice. You just get one of your kids and you get somebody else to just I travel with y'all and just do it. They whole thing to. is to capture it. Right. And that's what I end up doing. I start re recognizing my deficiency because I could do it for other people all day. Of course. But then for myself, I'd be like, oh, I just don't feel like it. Yes. And so now when I travel, like this month, I'll be going to three locations. I do my church at Word of Truth mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. this Sunday. Letting y'all know that now at Word of Truth. <laughs> then I go mm -hmm. to Northwood, Virginia to do Healing Word Church. And then um, Toronto, Canada. And oh, all wow. these are the live nice. podcasts. We'll be going to oh, do the live wonderful. podcast. Nice. And, awesome. and at the end of this month, it'll be a, a Galentine's event. Okay. And so I just, I pay a guy to travel with me. And that's all he does that's, is just that's, do that. See, that's I said, what you got to do. Because yeah, other no than way. that, you're not going to capture yeah, those things. And, and then you want to be in the moment. It's like, yes. I also yeah, yeah, yeah. know that I want to be present in these moments that like, yes. hold on real quick. Let me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So right. now, what were you saying? Right, 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 like, right, you know, right. I'd be wanting to just be present. You capture it. And then at the end, we like, wow, we got all this amazing footage. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But then the other problem is I don't go back and edit it. So it's, I, I'm <laughs> I done captured all this footage. I'd be like, I should be doing something with that footage. Right. So that's the other problem I got. Right. <laughs> no. And you were, funny. but you were right when you just said have the kid, have the kids do it. But yeah. let me tell you, they're so busy. Like you said, you got to have someone else. Designated you got to hire someone that's designated. That's all to they do, do and they love it yes. and they'll do it. Because our yeah. kids, I'll I'll send them something. Edit this for me. Oh, okay, mom. I get it back a week or two later. By then, <laughs> the moment's done. The it's moment over. gone. <laughs> it's, it's like over. It's gone. 
So you so, have. So are y'all mm-hmm. active on y'all social media accounts? Y'all respond? I do. I I, I, I <laughs> put I put respond. something out um, <laughs> this weekend, last weekend about uh, the Notre Dame offensive coordinator leaving. Oh gosh. And. Uh, yeah, it didn't. It went over well, as far as I'm concerned. But <laughs> as far as I'm but, concerned, yeah. For about an hour uh, that night, I just sat there and, and responded to people. And Good. Was, so you know, you so I do respond. do that. Every yeah. Okay. Yeah. So no, you yeah. Respond. That engagement is going to be amazing because yeah. I'm telling you, y'all going to okay. get a lot of engagement from this podcast. Awesome. Y'all going to start seeing a whole lot of followers. People going to be like, "Oh, that blessed me, Sharisha. Story blessed me. Oh my mm-hmm. God, King. I love what you said, Tim, about this, this, this. Hey, I'm dating a, an NFL player, and this yes. is what I'm experiencing. He's going to get an influx of all kind of stuff yes. and um, it may get a little overwhelming but take your time okay. and respond because yeah. they're going to find so much value oh, that's and sweet. they're going to they're awesome. going to they're going to just yeah. bombard you with praise because a lot of people are extracting different gems that were dropped sure. in this sure. episode and like it's, it's going to be amazing uh, so hey listen um, can't wait to watch the documentary uh, I bless your fashion show Amen. I want that to be absolutely amazing thank you uh, I speak blessings over y'all's marriage Man, I um, appreciate that brother. It's, just, it's, just, it's just a beautiful thing thank and to, for people to have an example to see what it looks like to honor God Amen. and to honor God with your marriage that's just absolutely amazing so hey y'all give it up for the Browns y'all <laughs> Ladarian thrusted suddenly into child protective services in 2015. My nephew, black, a boy. The likelihood of being adopted outside of kinship, slim to none. Armani, 16 years old, black, a boy, with five years in the foster care system before I even knew his name. The likelihood of ever being adopted, yep, you guessed it, slim to none. While Ladarian and Armani were trying to survive and barely thrive in an overpopulated and underfunded foster care system, I was living my own life, doing well professionally. Having been a single father with a daughter who at that point was doing well in college, it was my time to live my life, right? Wrong. I felt unsettled, tireless, agitated. There are just too many of our black children stuck in ambiguity and in the limbo of the foster care system. In 2017, I legally adopted my nephew, Ladarian. Fast forward to 2019, I had no ties to this other young king, but I felt God instructed me to adopt him also, and I obeyed. Starting over with parenting should have been enough, right? Working with various foster care and adoption agencies to help bring awareness to the countless young black kings in the foster care system should have decreased my agitation, right? Joining the board of directors of Advantage Adoption, an organization that helps find permanent adoptive homes for children in foster care, should have led to some type of resolve, right? No, not at all. None of it felt like I had done enough. I now realize that every one of those experiences was laying the fundamental foundation for my life's mission, Kingdom Royale. Kingdom Royale will be a luxury, state-of-the-art home for foster boys. Our first location will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We will utilize the whole person approach that instills identity, empowers them to advocate for themselves, and enlightens them regarding new perspectives and limitless options that they thought were impossible. Though the young kings will attend the local public schools that are in proximity to Kingdom Royale, Our at-home curriculum will broaden their worldview through participating in the arts, attending various cultural events, learning about and engaging in multifaceted discussions about current events and even relevant historical contexts, introducing them to gardening and landscaping and even caring for our animals on our farm and on-site stables. We just launched our startup capital campaign with the goal of raising $2.8 million. Now, why $2.8 million? Well, in 2017, I created a web series in which I performed random acts of kindness for targeting the homeless community. One of the most notable successes was that one of the videos went viral, garnering 28 million views. However, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't raise a single dollar to help in implementing a more sustainable plan for the homeless community. So throughout the years, with much remorse, I reflected on not maximizing that moment. I knew if at that time, just 10% of the viewers donated $1, we would have raised at least $2.8 million that could have really established long-term support for the homeless community, or at least started a long-term initiative to do so. This is my do-over. 
This is our new beginning. Together, we can attack this at the root by specifically helping our homeless black boys who are already disproportionately represented in the American foster care system. I'm LaTerris R. Whitfield. I've been nominated for three regional Emmys documenting my work with the homeless as well as my personal adoption journey. Despite those accolades, the greatest award for me is truly providing the infrastructure for a transformed life. Visit KingdomRoyale.com for more details. Crown a king and make a donation today. Wow. God is so intentional with the people he bring on the podcast. This Man, the Browns are absolutely phenomenal. Oh, my God. I just, I love it when I see a man loving a woman properly. That's what I'm, I champion that. I I support, I rally behind any man that knows how to love his woman properly. It's not some cookie cutter um, thing where you try to, I remember early on in my younger years, I used to think that every woman, uh, I used to call it the tennis bracelet theory that every woman wanted a tennis bracelet. And so I would just, as my income increased, I would increase the carrot weight of the tennis bracelet. And then I started saying, you know what? I'm going to start loving a woman on an individualized basis, find out what her needs are and uh, accommodate those. And so I love how Tim Brown said, you know what? This is a different type of woman. God is trusting me to love her properly, and he rose to the occasion. Salute you, King. Salute you, Sharice, for uh, being open and receptive to receive love because it goes both ways. You have to be willing to receive love as well as uh, return it. Shout out to y'all, Browns. Here's my favorite part of the podcast as I speak to my future wifey. Dear future wifey, walk with me. Stroll along marital bliss avenue as I sprinkle your face with delicate kisses while reminiscing of our journey to I do. Let's cross over the bridge of troubled waters to remind the enemy the weapons he formed against us didn't prosper. Grab my hand and take this left on Forget the Exes Boulevard. As Philippians 3.13 through 14 advise, we left those things which are behind and continue reaching forth to those things which are before. We are pressing towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Look ahead. There's Righteousness Boulevard. Stand on the inside as I walk on the outside, closest to the street. I've always treated you righteous and you've reciprocated the same. We've spoken to each other with honor and respect. It's one of the core values of our love. We've arrived at a crossroads. One direction says forever lane and the other forever drive. No matter which path we take, we'll always spend forever with each other. You are my destiny. I love you, beautiful. Your future hubby. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit. Live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.